So the weapon that I'm going to build for you here um, is basically going to be like a fireball. It starts life as one fireball, but then it explodes and, and a few fireballs come out. So I'm going to use this image here. And then I'll make another fireball. Um, I'll call it exploded FB. And all the work is going to happen in the fireball class. Uh, the only thing I need to put in this exploded one is that all I want to do in its act method is move. So here, you can certainly make more features and do other things to it. But just so you get the point of how a loop can make something uh, new, uh, I'm just going to keep my code as simple as I can for you. So basically here, I just want you to move one space when, when the exploded fireball acts. And the fireball, what it's going to happen is the way I envision it is there's going to be a counter, just like you know uh, a hand grenade or something else would have. So once that counter reaches zero, it explodes. But the fact that it needs a counter means I need to have a uh, private variable to keep track of it, one which I will initialize to zero. Okay, so counter equals, um, sorry, <laughs> I said it backwards, right? The grenade, you don't want a grenade that starts at zero. <laughs> That's a bad grenade. <laughs> uh, you want a grenade with a timer that starts somewhere higher and then counts down. So maybe what I'll do is I'll make my, uh, I'll make my counter, you tell me how long you want the fireball to live. That way it's a little more general uh, purpose. So my counter is going to be this explosion time. And when it acts, all I'm going to have it do is take that counter and decrement it. Then if my counter is 0, that's when I want it to explode. So the uh, explosion is going to basically take out the old fireball and stick in the new ones that are exploded versions. So before I take it out of the world, I have to know where it was. So I'll save that information because now when I stick the new fireballs in, I know where to put them. And I also need that world. I'm um, sorry, not a new world, but to get the world. So that I can remove things and add things, etc. So that's what I'll do here. Now I'm going to write a loop that spins through all the different uh, fireballs. And I'll show you how I can write a general purpose loop so that that way I can update my code later to have more or less fireballs. Now we'll talk about some limitations in Greenfoot because you'll notice it might look a little buggier than you think. But we'll write a generic loop here and then we'll talk about it. So the first thing I want to think about generically is how many fireballs will come out. <laughs> so let's just say for now. Um, and again, you can improve upon this, but let's just say I'm going to have eight. Now, if I think about them exploding in all directions, you could pick random directions, you could do other tricks, but all I'm going to do for this is spread them out evenly. So uh, normally, a full circle has 360 degrees. So I'm going to figure out how far will they be spread out. So maybe I'll call it rotation spread. Now, if you think about it, let's do some simple math. If I have 360 degrees in my circle, and let's say I had 10 fireballs. Um, well, let's just say I have, uh, sure, let's say two fireballs. That's easier than 10. Um, I would want 180 degrees as the spread between each of them. And 360 divided by 2 is how I get that 180. So this should give me the spread between each fireball. Now notice that uh, I'm doing integer division here. I'm going to lose the decimal numbers, which is OK, because Greenfoot won't use decimals as its uh, angles, just, just integers. 
Okay. Now, if you're thinking about a rotation, what's the, the nice place to start your rotation? Zero. Yeah, we'll pick zero. So I'll start with an angle of zero. And while my angle is less than 360 degrees, I don't want to go back to 360 because that's equivalent to zero. And what I'll say is the next angle is going to be incremented by that rotation spread. So that means, for example, if I'm doing 90 degrees in each angle, it's going to go 0, 90, 180, 270, and then it's, it's done. So um, what I'm going to do here now is put the fireball in the world, set its rotation, and then it'll do its own thing to explode here. So what I'm going to do is say um, exploded. Oh. No, thank you. Keep this. Don't show it again. Thank you. Exploded fireball um, FB is a new exploded fireball. This is what I'm going to stick in the world. But before I do that, I have to take that rotation. And I'm going to set it to whatever that current angle is. So that's how I'm using my loop here. Um, if I wanted to put 100 fireballs in the world, I could do this, and the loop would automatically update everything for me. So that's good. Um, set rotation to that angle. And now I'm going to tell the world to add this object, fireball, to the same position. Because when that explosion starts, all those fireballs start life where the old one was. Okay. So this should now remove the old one, stick in the new ones, and it should start its life uh, uh, as this exploded fireball. But what I'm going to show you here again is one more way that we could do a um, good programming. This is something that I've seen in some of your codes, which is fine. But remember, you always want to try and break down what you're doing to methods. So it's a good habit to think, for each task I'm trying to accomplish, I should make that a method. So rather than try and accomplish more than one thing, that would apply more than one method, I'm going to keep using methods to break down my code. So I'm going to take this code, and I'm going to call it, quite simply, explode. So public void explode. And I'm going to just take this code out of there and make it a method instead. Now, again, this is an organizational thing, but it also lets me um, use this method. If I use it in more than one place, all I have to do is call explode. If there's ever a problem in my code with exploding, I know the one place where I have to go and track it down. So now all I'm going to do is change this to explode. Now, as your experience goes on, it'll tell you a little bit more about you know, how you'd like to do this. But another thing I can add to this is there's a feature here why should I make it 8? An easy way to update that is to allow the person to do it. So let's make it more general purpose. And I'll say, give me the number of fireballs you want to explode. That way, whoever wants to explode can say, explode into 8 fireballs. That's nice and generic. Anytime I want to update this, all I have to do is say, explode into 10, explode into 100. So I think this is a better example of where we started. But hopefully, uh, you know, it's always fun doing live code because you never know where your error is going to pop up. But uh, before I can show you an example here, of course, I'm going to have to make a world. So this world doesn't really matter what it looks like. But I'll get, uh, I'll just pick a background that we can, we can do. So what I'll do is I'll stick a fireball in the world. And I'll say that this can be in the world for 30 acts before it explodes. And now when I'm running my scenario, it should live for a little bit and then boom, explodes. And those are new projectiles that could now hit my opponents. So 
the point again is that using a loop is much more general purpose much better solution if i want to go in here and say well i wouldn't like i don't like the way eight fireballs looks let's try a uh, hundred fireballs um this is going to illustrate a bit of a bug but it's still possible there will be a hundred fireballs here So there is 100 fireballs that were launched. You can see they're all on top of each other, though. Now, the reason why you're not seeing them um, in the location that you might want is because of the, the nature of that rounding. The pixels have to go to integer coordinates. So even though I'm telling it to go to, I don't know, uh, set rotation three degrees, three degrees is not far enough off course to land on a new pixel. So it's going to move one pixel directly above me. So we can talk about how to get around this bug if you were to, to want to make it, you know, truly uh, look like a circle of fire. But again, for the example, I'll start simple and then you guys can take that code and try and run with it. But it is possible to fix this. It's not your fault. It's because we're using integer pixels and we're rounding it. That's why it'll look like this pattern here. But uh, I'll just go change it one more time. I'll pick a number that will look like a proper explosion. You know, now I'm going to have it explode with six. And I'll put that fireball in the world. So let's just say uh, 10 acts before you explode. Boom. So there's uh, my six fireballs. And again, the integer rounding is why it's not uh, showing perfect, uh, you know, displacement. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about some other weapons we could write, but that gives you a basic example of a fireball loop that you could use. There's other kinds of weapons hopefully you could think of creatively, which would require more than one projectile when it shoots.